Welcome, welcome to To The Point. Um, very glad you're joining us. Um, this is all about you, the viewers. So I've got an announcement to make. We're going to change the format of this program called To The Point so that you can actually decide what we talk about. So we've got a new email address called to the point at revelationtv.com. Whatever you'd like to talk about, whatever you'd like me and my guests to talk about, please send an email to to the point at revelationtv.com, and that's what we'll be talking about. So um, you haven't got to put up with what I want to talk about. We want to talk about what you want to talk about, because Revelation T TV is all about you, the viewers. But today we're going to be uh, talking about carrying on about evolution. And as we look around ourselves, around, um, evolution, I believe, is a total lie. I think it's absolute rubbish. Um, <laughs> Uh, as we look around, we see a beautifully created universe, a beautifully created world, everything it is beautifully created, including our bodies. So I'm just going to remind ourselves from the scriptures exactly what we are um, and how God created us. So I'm going to read some scriptures to you. Um, and we'll start off with pic picture number one, picture of Jesus who is the creator of the universe. And this is what it says about Jesus Christ in John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So, what have we learned is that, first of all, that Jesus Christ created every single thing there is, and without him nothing was made that was made. And secondly, that he actually is the author of life. All life comes from Jesus Christ. So we live in a totally supernatural world. I've said it many times, but the Natural History Museum should be renamed. It should be called the Supernatural History Museum because there's nothing natural in there. Everything is totally supernatural because everything is created by God. So let's look at the next picture, number two. On the, in the Sistine Chapel is this famous uh, painting by, by Michelangelo, uh, the, the Creation of Man. Now, of course, it wasn't anything like that at all. So it's a very fine p painting, but actually the Bible has a very different story. So let's s concentrate on what the Bible says and not, a, not on the Sistine Chapel. In Genesis 1.26, it says, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now remember that God is a spirit. We're told in John, let's look at the back, next picture, number three. That's really a picture of nothing in particular, trying to give you the idea that God is a spirit. In John 4 verse 24, it says, God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So when God, plural, Elohim, in, uh, in Hebrew, in Genesis 1, said, let us create man in our own image. What did he create? He created spirits, spirits of Adam and the spirit of Eve. So uh, let's look at the next picture. That is uh, just a representation. It's actually curly and photography, um, but actually a representation of a human spirit. Um, so God created the spirit of Adam and the spirit of Eve in Genesis chapter 1. Now, in the next picture, number 5, we have a picture of, of Jesus walking on earth. Of course, he, he, he pre-existed all things. He was there right at the beginning. In the beginning was the word. Uh, he was there before anything else. Uh, he is from everlasting to everlasting. But that's just uh, an image of Jesus Walking, walking in uh, Judea uh, during his time on earth. And Jesus is said in, eight, in John chapter 8, verse 58, before Abraham was, I am. Now, I am, of course, is the word of God. So Jesus is saying he pre-existed everything. Um, so the next question we want to ask ourselves, and this is very relevant uh, to 
evolution, uh, is let's look at the next picture, number six. What exactly is a human being? All right, what, what are we? Well, a human being is something made of earthly elements with a spirit living in it. <laughs> um, let's look again at n slide number seven. We've seen it before, the human spirit. Um, now, um, I want to tell you about our human body. If you just look at me just for a moment. The, um, an average human weighs 11 stone or 70 kilograms. Um, and there are pro approximately seven uh, with uh, 27. <laughs> there are seven to the power of 27 uh, noughts after it uh, um, atoms in a human body. Now, of course, it, it, it depends on how, how big the human body is. Uh, but basically, there's an awful lot of atoms in a human body. Now, there are actually 118 uh, chemical elements in the periodic table, and our human bodies are made out of 66 of those elements, but they're not randomly put together. No, they're very carefully constructed, because we, we have 100 trillion cells, and each one is different. They've all perfectly designed according to the genetic code called our DNA, which is what this program is going to be all about. In Genesis 2, verse 7, it says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So let's look at the next pic picture, number 8, which is a picture of Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve were something brand new. Uh, they were created of the dust of the ground, but, but God, actually Jesus Christ, breathed into, his, into the spirit of Adam, um, the spirit which had already been created by God in Genesis 1, and that inanimate body became a living body, and man became a living being. Right, so let's look at exactly how that body was formed. So we're now going to look at number nine, which is DNA. You've heard me talking about DNA before. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, um, it's a very, very complicated molecule. Um, if you look at me again, I could try and explain to you um, about this word, Adam, and how Adam was created from the dust of the ground. The word dust comes from the Hebrew word afar, which means dry earth, dust, powder, ashes, earth, or ground. So basically, we're made of 66 of the 118 elements which were found on planet Earth. All right? Um, so um, that's what we're made of. Uh, not all of the elements, but 66 of them. Actually, that's quite an interesting number, because you remember that six is the number of man, Seven is the supernatural number of God, but six is the number of man, and we're made of 66 element. So just to repeat, in Genesis 2, verse 7, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So let's now look at this name, Adam. It wasn't chosen randomly. It's a very important word. Adam actually, in Hebrew, means human, specifically derived from the earth, and Adamar means ground or earth, because dam means blood. So the word Adam implies in Hebrew something human, something from the earth, and something containing blood. Well, there you go. That's what that's what a human being is. It's something human, something made from the uh, from the earth, and something containing blood, and something with the spirit living in it. Um, a man became a living being when God, uh, Jesus Christ, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now we need to talk about something completely different, but really on the same track, which is all about design. Now we look at a highly designed everything. When we look out of the window and see the trees, the flowers, the grass, the animals, and other humans, we are seeing something uh, created beautifully by God, not randomly, as the evolutionists want us to believe. They want us to believe it will happen by chance. That is absolute rubbish, and that's putting it very politely. So how are things designed? I'm going to take you on a little uh, trip now to try and uh, help you to understand design. Let's look at the next picture, number 10. You'll be familiar with that, a World War II Spitfire. 
Now, World War II Spitfire, as you well know, did not arise out of a, a bucket of primordial slime. Of course it didn't. Um, it was actually famously designed by R.J. Mitchell, who was an aeronautical air engineer. Now, in number 11, here is one of many, many plans of a Spitfire designed. It was a fantastic aeroplane, and um, some people would dispute it, but the Spitfires and the Hurricanes won the Battle of Britain uh, in, 19, uh, in, in the Second World War. Right, now this Spitfire was very cleverly designed, and let's look at the next picture, which is number 12. Um, it had a special engine called a, a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine in it, and that too was specially designed. Let's look at the next picture. Next picture is number 13, which is the design of a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. Again, that was very, very carefully designed. It was actually the best, um, it was the best aircraft engine in World War II. It was a fantastic engine. A uh, fantastic engine, beautifully designed in a beautiful aircraft. Now, these are only, I've only just shown you very simplified plans. Of course, there were far, far more plans for Spitfire design than, than I've shown you, but those are just the simple designs of the engine and the actual aircraft. And out of interest, there were 20,000 Spitfires produced, and they were made in factories all over the United Kingdom. For example, here's in picture number 14. Here is a Spitfire factory very close to where I live in Southampton. And they were made all over the, all over the country on purpose, so that uh, enemy bombers couldn't destroy at one stroke all Spitfire production. Right, let's move on. Um, so occasionally, a Spitfire sadly crashed. Here's a image number 15, is a, a, a crashed Spitfire. Now, human bodies and cells can do something that Spitfires can't do. In other words, they can mend themselves. Because God has programmed into our DNA something absolutely fantastic, miraculous, and outstanding, the ability to uh, mend itself. So let's look at the next picture. Our actual whole body uh, actually comes from one single fertilized egg. That is a picture in number slide 16 of a fertilized egg. And basically what you have there is the, um, ba basically a DNA of the, the father and the mother come together to form a complete, what's called a genome, uh, so that the whole human body can be beautifully um, uh, manufactured in the mummy's womb in the exact way that God intended it to be. And so nine months later, after the cooking process over nine months is finished, what we have here is in slide 17, a newborn baby, which of course looks very, very different from the single cell at conception. Of course, by the way, life starts at conception. Remember that uh, Jesus had a half-brother called James, and James said that the body without the spirit is dead. Guess when that little baby first came to life? When his spirit entered his body at conception. So all human life starts at conception. Right, now let's look at the next picture, number 18. Uh, I think you're probably getting a bit bored with me talking about it, but I was involved in a very serious road traffic accident, and my leg looked like that. That actually isn't my leg, um, because I haven't actually got the x-rays of my leg, but nevertheless, it's almost identical. Um, my leg was basically smashed up. Um, in fact, I had 11 fractures, um, and it was pinned in exactly the same way by a very, very, very clever surgeon. I'm enormously grateful to him. But the whole point is that although I'm very grateful to the surgeon, uh, uh, the surgeon didn't actually, although he fixed the bones, he didn't mend the bones. Because um, um, in our bones, if you look at me now, um, we've actually got um, special cells called osteoblasts and osteoclasts. And what they do is create new bone when a bone is fractured. It actually helps if um, the bones are set by the surgeon with a pin down the middle of them. And of course, I'm enormously grateful. 
But if I just wandered around with a pin down my tibia, I wouldn't be able to walk. Now, what has to happen is calluses formed over a three to six month period um, for all the healing to go on. And it all happens because our DNA is programmed on purpose by God so that fractured bones can mend themselves. Just as well, because I had 11 fractures of this accident. I, ne I need to stop talking about it. But it is a picture of God's amazing design that he actually programmed our bodies to mend themselves when they were smashed up. Uh, in Psalm uh, 139 verse 14, it says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I don't think any of us realize just how fantastic the design of the human body is. Let's look at the next picture, number 19. The thing is that a DNA is a totally supernatural, amazing um, molecule designed by God. It couldn't possibly have happened by chance in the primordial slime. Um, it's actually quite literally God's language of biological information. It's uh, God's blueprint of every single cell of the hundred trillion cells in our bodies. Um, within each cell encoded in the DNA are the exact instructions to build all the proteins in our body. Our body is made out of protein and fat, um, but all of our 100 trillion cells, and they're all different, they're all programmed according to our DNA, our deoxyribonucleic acid, which is the most complex genetic code in the universe. It's absolutely fantastic. Don't take my word for it. Why not listen to President Clinton? Next picture, number 20. President Clinton, you may remember him, President of the United States. And this is what he actually said. Today we are learning the language in which God created life. We are gaining ever more awe for the complexity, the beauty, and the wonder of God's most divine and sacred gift. He said that in the White House on June the 26th in the year 2000. So uh, don't take my word for it. Take, why not take President Clinton's word for it? That actually this, is, this DNA is unbelievable. It's um, the language in which God created life. Why not believe the American president? So let's have a, a close-up look at exactly what DNA is. Image number 21, the molecular structure of DNA. That is unbelievably complex. It's a genetic code. Uh, unbelievably complicated. Man can't even begin to understand it. It is so unbelievably complex. It's actually ge a geometric code. Uh, you may be familiar with computers. I expect you are. And you probably know it's a series of, of z uh, ones and zeros. This is quite, quite different. Um, so inside the 100 trillion cells in your body is this famous double helix of DNA. It's God's biological information system. And this is by far the most amazing information system in the universe. Um, it's not only is it very, very uh, complex, but it's very, very compact. I mean, you also in, you've got 100 trillion cells and they're tiny. They're absolutely tiny. And yet, each individual cell is programmed by the genetic code within it called the DNA. Now, in the next picture, um, if you look at slide 22, remember each of your individual cells is tiny. But if you, um, if you were to stretch one molecule of DNA out, it would be six feet long. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Um, even though the little cells are absolutely tiny and you need a, a special microscope to look at them, if you stretched out the DNA, it would be six feet long. There we go. Right. Um, how powerful is DNA? Let's look at the next picture, number 23. Those are the most powerful computers on planet Earth. They're the supercomputers at NASA, uh, the space or the space research organization and they're called supercomputers because they are really super computers well let me tell you that your dna is vastly 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 more powerful than thousands and thousands and thousands of nasa supercomputers there's no comparison at all 
<laughs> uh, that's how powerful your DNA is. I want you to imagine now, in slide 24, a teaspoon of DNA. Now, it is not possible to have a teaspoon of DNA. If you did, you would have all the DNA on planet Earth. <laughs> but I'm just trying to just give you an example of how powerful DNA is. Well, if you had a, t a teaspoon of DNA, it would hold all the precise assembly instructions for all of the proteins of all of the thousand million species of animals that have ever existed, all of the humans that have ever existed, and still have enough storage information to store all of the information ever written down in all time. That's how powerful DNA is. Unbelievable unbelievably complex code. It's absolutely astounding. So basically, let's look at number 25, image number 25. God is a super scientist and a super intelligence. We will never, never, never understand how powerful and how how amazing and what a wonderful creator he is. The more you study this stuff, you just realize how absolutely mind-blowing Jesus Christ is. Uh, we, think, we tend to think of, of Jesus Christ as a, a religious figure who died on the cross for us, and the blood of Jesus cleans us from all sins. Of course, this is absolutely correct. But he is the most amazing mathematician and scientist as well. Absolutely mind-blowing totally, totally unbelievable intelligence. We'll never understand the intelligence of God. Now, let's look at what the evolutionists believe. Number 26, they think that all of this happened by chance in the primordial slime. There was supposed to have been a flash of lightning or some rubbish like that in the primordial slime. And life arose by chance in the primordial slime. I can tell you that is the biggest load of garbage I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I don't mind saying it publicly. It is absolute rubbish. No way could DNA possibly happen by chance. Now, what about this DNA business? It was discovered by slide 27, Francis Crick and James Watson. Uh, they were both awarded Nobel Prize for discovering uh, DNA. Um, they were very, very clever people, but they didn't actually design uh, DNA. They just discovered DNA. Now, recently, um, scientists actually mapped the whole of DNA. Let's look at number 28. Uh, there's something we may have heard of called image number 28, the Human Genome Project. Well, they actually mapped, mapped the whole of DNA. I don't think they really mapped the whole of DNA because the, the, the DNA is far, far too complicated for anybody to map all of it. But this human genome project was completed in 2003. It actually took them 13 years to do, and it was coordinated by the US Department of Energy and the National Institutes of Health. And what they wanted to do was to identify all the approximately 25,000 genes in human DNA and determine the sequence of the three billion chemical base pairs that make up human DNA. Uh, let's look at number next picture, slide 29. DNA is actually made up of adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, um, four amino acids, uh, and a very, very precise code. Um, so basically, um, what they tried to map, or what they have mapped, uh, to a degree, at any rate, is uh, what DNA, in, how DNA is encoded. So what I'm trying to impress upon you is just how amazing uh, DNA is, how amazing the design of every single thing you see on planet Earth is. It isn't just humans and animals that have DNA, it's all living creatures, all plants, Everything that is living has DNA in it. It is absolutely unbelievable. I get very excited about this, but the thing of it is, is I don't know if you do. So what I'm going to do is change this program so that you can actually ask me and my guests, what would you like to talk about? You can choose any subject you like. Please write to info, sorry, say that again. Please write to a new email address, 
to the point at revelationtv.com. A brand new email address, especially for you, our wonderful viewers, because remember that Revelation TV is all about you, the viewers. Please write to Revelation... Get it right, because it's the first time I'm doing it. Uh, write to to the point at revelationtv.com and we will try and answer your questions. Anyway, thank you for joining us and we'll carry on the next program a little bit more about genetic codes. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you. It's all about you.